the criterion that looks at uh, whether the story included independent experts and looked at conflicts of interest in the experts is really a double-barreled approach. What we look for in stories is that the journalist um, had more than just a single source, that that source was independent of the work being done, and that the reporter looked for conflicts of interest in any of the sources that were interviewed. Well, why is that important? Um, about half the time in our experience of thousands of stories that we've looked at over the years, about half the time journalists uh, don't get a satisfactory grade on this double-barreled criterion. They either don't get an independent expert or don't look at conflicts of interest in the sources or they don't do either. So half the time. Well, that's a coin toss then in terms of what the audience is going to get from such stories. Some people might think that glass is half full. I, I think it's half empty because to the reader, to the news consumer, to the healthcare consumer, they can never quite be sure about the integrity of the message they're getting. Or is this just someone pushing their own idea, their own research, their own product, um, trying to improve their own chances of gaining tenure and promotion in an academic setting, trying to improve their own chances of uh, uh, getting something patented, uh, getting something marketed, um, expanding their own royalties, expanding their own uh, reputation. We don't in this country have enough of a healthy, vibrant discussion about conflicts of interest in healthcare. And on our project, on healthnewsreview.org, we want to be leaders in opening people's minds to the questions about well, what are we comfortable with. Just because you disclose a conflict of interest and just because a story might include a conflict of interest, does not necessarily besmirch the quality or the integrity of that evidence. But there is so much conflicted research, and increasingly industry is influencing uh, research from the very inception of a protocol or the germ of a research idea, that we need to ask ourselves, well, are we comfortable with this? None of us wants to pay more taxes, and indeed, support for basic biomedical research at the federal government level is declining. So uh, who's going to pick up the slack? And that's where industry has come in. Are we comfortable with that? Where do we draw the line? We don't talk about that enough as a society. And we're going to try to do that more on this site and try to encourage journalists to do it as well.